Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson and we are privileged to have Governor Tony Evers as our guest today. Uh, this is one of many interviews we've done because it is election season. And Governor, since we're very uh, low on time, I wanted to get right into it. Um, as we discussed, uh, the commercials have been hitting you and uh, also the uh, postcards that we see in the mail have been slamming you for inflation and crime. And I want to ask you, number one, are you willing to accept credit for worldwide and national inflation? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Uh, and I haven't been to the Ukraine lately either. But, the, but I am concerned about inflation, even though we don't necessarily control it here in, uh, in Madison or in the state of Wisconsin. It's, an, it's a national issue. But I'm, I have a plan, and frankly, my opponent doesn't have a plan. My plan is quite simple. We should be, you know, we have a large surplus uh, in, in the state's uh, uh, coffers, and I believe those that happened because some really good investments we made in small businesses during the pandemic. And so I've asked the Republicans, to come on, come on back, actually go to work, haven't been there since March, and, uh, and take up my plan. Cutting income taxes for middle class Wisconsinites by 10 percent, uh, getting rid of the minimum markup law that adds money to uh, our gasoline it could save people up to 30 cents a gallon. And then in, make a large increase in tax credits for child care. Child care is really important. It's costing more and more. And if we can help out with some tax credits there and some others, too. But at the end of the day, I have a plan. The Republicans uh, obviously don't want, you know give anybody any credit for anything before the election. That said, we, we need it, we, we can and we need to do something. And my plan is something that would be simple to do. And, and so it sounds like tax cuts and tax credits, are you sure you're running as a Democrat? Yes, I, I'm positive of that. But it, All right. we, we have well, a let's large, talk a little a bit about the, list. I'm sorry, talk over you. The, the um, difference between uh, the Democratic and Republican approaches to this um, campaign seems to be, you know, um, on the Republican side, they are not addressing the abortion issue. And uh, certainly the, the, on the federal government with the Supreme Court decision, it has thrown it back into the states. And where do you stand with how you would approach it? It seems to be we have an 1850, uh, what is it, 1859 law? 1849 law that 49. that criminalizes abortion and throws doctors into jail and has no exceptions for rape or incest. All those, you know, all those things are horrible. You think about reproductive rights. Women shouldn't have to check with uh, the government before they know what what services they should get or not. It's just it's just wrong. Uh, Josh Call and I have a lawsuit in uh, uh, that's winding its way through the courts now. And, and I, I, I believe it's going to be successful, but whatever we can do, we, we cannot live and it's in, improper for us to, to essentially have politicians making those type of decisions for women. It is just flat out wrong. So we're hopeful about the lawsuit. Uh, obviously, my opponent is all in on, on this and uh, uh, he will he will em embrace it. I don't embrace it. And by all in, meaning he is uh, in favor of restricting abortion, absolutely, with no exceptions for health of the mother or rape or incest. Exactly. Exactly. That's where he has been right, right, right from the get-go. So the lawsuit will continue to play out. My goal would be uh, essentially to have uh, go back to where it was uh, when Roe v. Wade went away. It should be done at the national level. We could do it at the state level. But Roe v. Wade was a, was a good place for us to be for the last 50 years, so let's go back to that. All right, and finally, on with regard to crime, um, that seems to be an issue that uh, they want to paint you as being either soft on crime or somehow pro-crime, and they cite uh, the Blake shooting and um, also the uh, parade um, trial that's going on now, and perceived uh, imperfections with the system somehow attributing that to you. So um, what is your plan with regard to crime and where do you stand on those issues? Yeah, certainly crime is up across the country. Wisconsin is no exception. During the pandemic, we put, I think it was about $100 million or, or slightly more than that, into uh, providing resources for local municipalities to 
you know, whether they want to hire more officers or, or firefighters or EMTs or, or use it for violence prevention programs. So that went out the door. Some municipalities took advantage of that, and I really appreciate that. But at the end of the day, this is an issue around, around resources. Uh, shared revenue is the term that uh, we use at the state level. How much money goes back from the state to local government? Local government controls issues around crime mainly because they have you know, they have police, fire, EMTs on on their on their staff. And so, for the last uh, couple of decades or decade for sure, um, the the money going into the increases in shared revenue for local municipalities has been less than one less than less than it has been a negative number so actually the, that revenue has been going down at a time when it should be going up i made a commitment to the local counties and municipalities across the state that we would increase at this time and continue increasing it the idea that somehow we can do all the all we need to do to stem crime without without with less money that's that's a fool's that's a fool's errand we need to provide that money to the municipalities so that they can do the work. Well, why is it that we've seen that um, those funds go down in a sense, um, defunding our municipalities and their ability to fund their police departments? Yeah, the, the Republican legislatures have done this over time. I, I actually asked for some increases during my uh, two budgets and, uh, and they zeroed it out. So apparently the Republican Party doesn't believe that uh, uh, they need to have those resources at the local level to hire more police or fire fighters or EMTs. Uh, but that's a ridiculous notion. And there's all sorts of other issues that, uh, that the local municipalities take care of. They need help from the state and, uh, and we're going we're gonna to make it happen this time. Um, we've heard uh, Republican candidates talk about uh, the backlog at the crime lab and processing evidence as well as uh, not filling some positions at the Department of Justice and others. Do you uh, have a response to that? No, yes, I do. And I, I think Josh Call is doing a great job. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously we have some outdated facilities in the Milwaukee area that uh, we're actually, at, as we speak, uh, uh, rebuilding those facilities. But it, they, everybody that needs to be hired has been, has been hired. Uh, Josh has been doing a great job. Okay. And do you see any role the state has in stepping in and prosecuting crimes in Milwaukee because of a perceived unsolved crime rate in, in Milwaukee County? That's a local issue. A local, you know, local DA is uh, an elected official. You know, if, if there's needed, need more money for, uh, for investigators or, you know, making sure that we have personnel in the courts, in those areas to kind of get things through. Actually, during the pandemic, we provided money for Milwaukee to do that, just that, have night court so that people aren't waiting months and months and months to have their case uh, adjudicated. So yeah, that's where that's where revenue comes in. I, I don't see the state playing a role in that. Those are, we have locally elected district attorneys and sheriffs that, uh, that, you know, that's their job. It's not the state's job. Obviously the state coordinate, helps coordinate, to Sarah provides resources, but at the end of the day, those are things that are dealt with locally. All right. And then, uh, so your plan moving forward in the next four years would be to continue to attempt to work with uh, the other side and balance uh, government at the state level? Yeah, exactly. Shared revenue should not be a, a Republican or a Democrat issue. Uh, issue. You know, I, I was at a, a fire department not too long ago in northern Wisconsin, and they if they had two calls at the same time, they couldn't respond. And uh, it's because they don't get enough resources from the state. And that whole area that I went uh, visit was visiting, they, uh, uh, they were represented by Republicans. Big surprise, right? I mean, they have, a, they have the, uh, the majority in the legislature likely to remain that. So yes, this should be a, um, a no-brainer. And I think we will actually get some help on that. I, I, do, I do believe that Republicans understand how important the work is at the local level, and the local people are telling them that too. So there, there should be not much uh, arguing, argument about increasing shared revenue. And uh, how about that minimum markup on gas you mentioned earlier? Do you see that having some success? Absolutely. You know, uh, just as a, an aside, I, 
I, I vetoed a bunch of bills that were really horrible over the last couple of years, but I signed two thirds of them. And uh, of those two thirds, there were Democrats uh, that had voted for that or, or authors of those bills. So, re, you know, Democrats and Republicans do get along sometimes and, and actually the majority of the time. So shared revenue, I believe, will be something that uh, has Republican and Democratic support. Well, thank you, Governor, for your time. Appreciate it very much. Uh, I guess we have a couple of weeks left to Election Day. Anything else that you want to tell the voters as we leave? Yeah, the, the people of Wisconsin have to understand how important this election is. I have a, an opponent who is, uh, frankly, on the wrong side of the issue of reproductive health. He wants to defund our public schools. I'm not quite sure how we do that in this state. We have good public schools. We, the idea of defunding them uh, scares most people. And uh, he's someone that uh, you know believes in the big lie. He, he, he's certain as to who won that last election. And, and the last thing we need is somebody like that in a position of authority on making decisions around elections. Our elections in Wisconsin are safe, secure, and fair. And uh, and so those all those things are on the, on the on the ballot. But what my what, where I'm going to be focusing my areas are in making sure that our, our our schools and most importantly our municipalities get the get the money they need to do the job they're doing. All right, very good. Thank you, Governor Evers, and I want to thank our viewers for watching another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. Have a good day.